scripture here is not for the light of heart. It's not for the, the weak, you know, Christians right now. This, this, this is the real stuff. You're talking about really wanting to grow with God. This is the type of reading that you have to do. Say, okay, God, I get it. I have to make a choice. You think it would be kind of easy. When examining the scriptures that we've been discussing, when we were several, about a couple months ago, we were in Genesis, and then we were in Exodus, and now we're in Deuteronomy. We know that the children of Israel have a history that's unique to any other nation that ever existed. We know that God made special promises to Israel and performed marvelous things to facilitate the fulfillment of those promises. God revealed his holy and righteous and just nature and provided the framework that you think that would be conducive for anybody to trust. But we live in such an untrusting society. You can't go anywhere without people saying, well, I want a proof of funds, proof of insurance. I want a proof of employment. I want a proof of residency. I want a background check. I want a reference check. I want an education verification. And after I get all that, then I still need you to take a drug test. Because we live in a society that is untrusted. But what are they saying? I just want to know that you are who you say you are. I want to know that you've done what you said that you've done. I want to know that you are where you say that you are. It's just misplaced. It's misplaced. Are you who you say you are? But see, the problem is we treat God in a similar fashion. As if he's not already established and his proof of concept is already good. Show me, Lord, why I should trust you. Lord, before I move, I need a proof of funds. Lord, before I move, I need you to make sure that you cover me, Lord. I want to make sure that you have insurance just in case it doesn't work out. Lord, I need you to prove that you are who you say you are. Lord, do you have any references that you can share with me before I move? I, I want to tell you, church, today, and I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but he has absolutely nothing to prove to each and every one of us. Because he is who he is. The scripture says, I am that I am. That means he's always been what he is and who he is. Yes. And what do we need him to be? Moses had the task of leading the people to the land that was promised to them. It was not an easy task. But, but as, as a leader, I, I love talking about Moses. I love reading, you know, Exodus. I love reading about Moses because there's just so much that you can learn about him as a leader. You would think that people who were oppressed for 400 years would, would embrace the opportunity and the desire to be free and not have to be coerced into being free. But when Moses prepared the children of Israel to enter the promised land, he reminded them of this truth. And we read it. If you read more in Deuteronomy chapter 30, starting at the beginning, the Bible explains that the children of Israel had no excuse for their neglect or rejection of God. Moses told the children of Israel that they had been given the word of God. They had been told about the blessings and the curses of God. They knew about which God considered good and that which God considered bad. They knew about the consequences associated with obedience and disobedience. Verses 11 through 14 tells us about Moses told the children of Israel that the commands Moses spoke on God's behalf were not too mysterious. That means they were very clear. Moses told them that the commands of God were not far off. That means they were very close. The commands were not confined to heaven or beyond the ocean, that the word of God was, that they, that the word of God was inaccessible. But the only requirement was that they must adhere to it. They have to make a choice. I want to encourage someone today that the things that you're wanting for God to do in your life is not outside of your reach. But it may be outside of your choices right now. It's not too far out of your comprehension. It's not too difficult. Verse 14 says, but the word is very near you in your mouth and in your heart that you may observe it. So here's a challenge. We have to observe it. It has to be a choice. We must make that decision to adhere to it. See, on the other side of obedience and good decisions is a plan that the Lord has only for you. On the other side of obedience and good decisions is a plan that the Lord has only for you. On the other side of obedience and good decisions is a plan that the Lord has only for you. But it's a choice that only that you can make. See, this is the year we've been saying that, you know, this is the year claiming no excuses. So the problem is that we lack of trust, a lack of trust and obedience 
See, the proof of our concept is for our actions to show what we truly believe. What does that look like? My God, I think about Abraham and Isaac, his only son. And he was asked to sacrifice his only son. After waiting so long, I imagine the amount of trust that it takes to take something that you've wanted all your life. And you say, you tell me, God, you require me to take something that I've been praying for and believing for and something that's all I ever wanted. And you're asking me to slay that on the altar without knowing the end result. Say, yes, that's what I require. Yeah. And that's a choice that only you can make. Yeah. You're either going to trust me or you're not going to trust me. Do you think that I can do it or you, do you not think that I can do it? Am I God or am I not God? That's a choice that he had to make without knowing the end result. What type of level of relationship do you have to get with God to understand, God, I trust you with everything? Yeah. It's so much easier to say than it is to actually do. Yeah. I trust you with everything. Yeah. So you can't do that with someone that you do not trust. It was an act of Abraham's obedience for something that he did not want to do. But the Lord was required. And the Lord showed up and said, stop. And it was then that there was a ram and a bush appeared. What does that tell me? That God rewards obedience. But you won't be obedient to someone that you don't really trust. I think about Joseph, who was guilty of only having a dream, and his brothers hated him for having that dream, and we know about his life because I preached on it for about six weeks. They threw him into the pit. They sold him into slavery. He was thrown into jail, all these different things. He was lied on. He was overlooked. All these unfortunate things that happened to him in his life until the Lord said, now it's time for me to elevate you. But everywhere that he was, every stage that Joseph experienced, he said, God was with him. So we have to be faithful. But you can't be faithful to someone that you do not trust. Right. It was Joseph's faithfulness that carried him through the unfortunate but necessary things that transpired in his life. He was pulled out of his comfort zone only so that he could bless a nation. God, you're telling me that you're inconveniencing me because, because there's something bigger and better that you have on the other side yes. of my faithfulness. I thank God that the end of the story is typically better than the beginning. And I'm thankful that God rewards faithfulness. But you can't be faithful to someone that you do not trust. I think about Moses, who was born under the sentence of death. He was placed in a river, only to be found by Pharaoh's daughter. He was raised in the palace with the best education. He had some conflict. He had to run from, from Pharaoh. It was in the wilderness. It looked like a setback, but God was using it as a setup. So while he was in the wilderness, God said, I know I have you here. You may not understand why you're here, but right now I'm preparing you for your next assignment. And I need to make sure that, the, oh my God, while you're working for your next assignment, the decisions that you make right there, whether it's in the palace or in the wilderness, Wilderness is very important. They saying, okay, God said, this is what I want you to do. Well, well, well God, I'm, I'm not qualified. God, I don't speak well. God, who's going to go with me? What am I going to do if they don't listen to me? They say all these things. God said, I have to work through all of the junk that you have in your life about you feeling like you're insignificant and that God can't use you. God said, hurry up and get yourself together because there's something that I have to do. There's something that I want to do. There's an assignment. There's a plan that only you can accomplish. Yeah. But a choice had to be made. He had to work through all of his excuses. But at the, end of the, at the end of the day, he made a choice. And he did it. See, you cannot act for something that you don't believe in. It was Moses' action that led to the freedom of all Israel from their oppressor. I thank God that there's so many times that he sees more in us than we see in ourselves. I'm thankful that God rewards the right choices that we make. But you won't make the right choices if you don't trust the choice that's being asked of you. That's where the decision has to be made. I said, this is what I'm calling you to do. Pharaoh, I mean, you need to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. But, but God, I, I, I don't speak well. I, I, what if they don't listen to me? Who's going to go with me? But I, I, I don't have, I don't, God said, I just, I'm calling you, I will make the provision. But I can't make you obedient. And the thing is, a lot of times we're waiting for God to make the provision. God say, no, first and foremost, it's predicated on you being obedient. I need you to say yes. I need you to walk forward in faith, not knowing what the end result means. And then I can come alongside of you and provide the provision and the answers 
that you need. So Lord, why should I trust you? Why should you trust me? Why should you trust me? Check my resume. I, I did it for Abraham. I, I did it for Joseph. And I did it for Moses. If, if you're faithful and obedient and ready to move, I can do it for you too. I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Moses is telling the people, this land has been promised to us. It's just our job to go out there and take hold of it. Verse 15 says, see, I've set before you today life and prosperity and death and adversity. And that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that you may live and multiply. And that the Lord your God may bless you in the land where you are entering to possess it. Verse 17 says, but if your heart turns away and you will not obey, but are drawn away and worship other gods with a little g and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You will not prolong your days in the land where you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess it. Verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants. Descendants. You're telling me that my, my, not only is, is my obedience, it can, it can only just impact me, but you're telling me that, that people are coming behind me? You're telling me that on the other side of my choices, that I'm setting up for the people, the generations that are coming behind me? So I'm telling you, that, and you say, okay, God, I don't know what's next. God saying, if I can just get you to be obedient, your obedience can impact everybody that's coming behind you. People that you've not even met. You've been praying for your grandkids, your great grandkids, and all these God saying, if you line up and get obedient, not only will I make that promise to you, but everybody behind you will be able to benefit from your obedience. You and your descendants. That's why our choices are so important. Because as many people that are riding over depending on us to make the right decision. My God, that generational curse can stop with you. That, that, that dysfunction can stop with you. And you just think of my God, it ends right now with my obedience so that everybody behind me, I don't want to have to walk in the same path that I had to walk in. See, maybe you've never been through anything, but I know that some people say, you know what, God, why is he like my family? It's always us. Same thing. One thing after another. God said, it can end right now. I just need you to be obedient. Yeah. We're talking about being some game changer. We're talking about changing some things. And then you have to realize, God, I have the authority. I have the ability, God, on the other side of my choices, God. God say, all I need is just one person to believe. And that one person to believe, it will change the course of their entire generation. All of the descendants. Many of you are walking in blessings not because of you're so good, but because of decisions that people made before you. So if you don't like what's going on in your life right now, I challenge you to make a decision to say, not today, say, it stops right now. It stops with me. Then you can break the cycle right now. It just requires you to make that decision. 